Good afternoon and welcome to today's session on how to series with Mr. Vishal Shah. I am Prasanna, co-host of the event today. Let me introduce today's presenter, Mr. Vishal Shah, CEO and co-founder of Sinasoft Technologies. He has over 18 years of experience and expertise of IT industry. He is known as seasoned technology stalwart and inventor of specific patented technologies, a writer, a serial entrepreneur, an investor, and importantly, a go-to guy for MSMEs. After an overwhelming response to AHA, that is AHA, Ask Him Anything series, we are launching How To series with Mr. Vishal Shah. In this webinar, he will solve problems of remotely accessing legacy applications like Tally, ERP, customized applications for, from any device in fast, secured, and cost-effective manner a must attend webinar for SME owners and IT professionals. We also have Mr. Sudhir Chaube, co-founder of Sinosoft in the panel. He looks after the sales and marketing aspect of our organization. If you have any questions while you watch this demonstration, kindly write in question and answer tab in the bottom of your Zoom login. The panel will take up the questions at the end of the session. Alternatively, in, in case if you want to ask any question, in the end of the session, you may please raise your hand and we shall activate your microphone to ask the question. I request you all to please fill the survey form which you will get at the end of the session to give us your valuable feedback. Uh, Vishal sir, can you please take it ahead from here? Yeah, thank you Prasanna for the introduction. Uh, good afternoon to all of you. As uh, Prashanna mentioned, you know, uh, we started a webinar series. Uh, we were uh, say, uh, we were terming it as AHA, AHA, Ask Him Anything. And uh, we got very good response. People gave us a feedback that uh, it really solved us, those problems very practically. Sometimes they got a lot of clarity uh, on a lot of ambiguous uh, issues. So we thought of starting this another series, which we call it as how-to series. 
in how to how to series would be more hands on and ask him anything would be more strategic so uh, when you are participating in ask him anything uh, kind of uh, uh, series you know you have a lot of questions uh, pertaining to your use cases and uh, i try my best to answer them in how to series we will take a specific problem and then we will show you how we solve that problem or how we can solve the problem and in case there are many ways to solve the problem we will see how many ways we can solve the problems we will compare those different methods and then we can recommend uh, the best method so today uh, this is the first session of our how to series by vishal shah myself and here uh, uh, this this particular topic we selected is very apt you know uh, we have been seeing that rising number of covid cases in last one month and again uh, in many um, metro cities a uh, lot of restrictions have been applied and for the safety of our own people you know we also encourage them to work from home and many a times our organization applications are such that uh, they cannot be accessed uh, until and unless you have very uh, sophisticated infrastructure for application virtualization so this is something uh, where we selected this topic to start this particular series and it is how to remotely access tele erp customized applications or virtual desktops so uh, we normally do it in our own way so i'm going to give you utmost clarity on uh, how to do it what is to be done what is not to be done um, what are our uh, criteria to select a good and right uh, fit of the solution so uh, before we start with this particular uh, uh, topic you know let me understand the uh, texture of all the attendees you know so that i can relate uh, my uh, subsequent talks you know to uh, help them understand that better so i request prasanna to just run a poll uh, that will give us an idea you know um, you know who are our attendees and what is their uh, expectation from our webinar so after we go through this particular poll uh, we will uh, start the how to series with vishal shah on remotely accessing legacy applications so as we uh, see here uh, 20% of the attendees are the ones who have multi location operations and they want to provide remote access of a legacy application to the users 40% are uh, the individuals who are professionals and they are designing application virtualization solution for their users and 40% are uh, you know attending it to gain knowledge i am happy this is uh, you know uh, you find this sessions worthy of gaining knowledge uh, so now we will start with our agenda so let me go to the next slide so now uh, why would we require to give access of our legacy applications to our remote users so the first reason in these days is increasing number of remote users and work from home users increasing number of remote users and work from home users so basically um, we know it is pandemic time every organization is providing for work from home kind of uh, solutions and uh, it is not only the file data you want to give access to your users you also want them to use your legacy application 
it could be your tally it could be your accounting package it could be your erp it could be your crm solution or it could be any customized application you have developed for your operations management which your users have to access so because we have increasing number of remote users and work from home users we might want to extend the access of our legacy application over and above our file data another reason is uh, you know there is a compulsion to provide access to enterprise applications like erp from anywhere with security you know we need to have uh, you know um, we need to provide access of our legacy application at the same time we also want to secure our data let's say if it is a tally which contains accounting data or if it is your erp which contains lot of your enterprise resource data it could be your hrms it could be your crm which has lot of sensitive data and when you want to access this particular uh, data remotely by your users you are also concerned and you cannot avoid it because it is compulsion you might have uh, users working from anywhere nowadays why we users we most of us have users working nowadays like in our company we provide uh, work from home to uh, most of the people because uh, we think that you know uh, sometimes talent is restricted by the boundaries and geographies so uh, if we have uh, our head office in ho we cannot expect uh, you know um, head office in uh, ahmedabad we cannot expect uh, all uh, uh, talent to be joining uh, our ahmedabad office there could be a talent in kolkata there could be a talented professional in bangalore and they want to work so we 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 have provided uh, like they can work from anywhere you know they can work from anywhere and sometimes uh, just by breaking this uh, uh, particular uh, i would say constraint that uh, we work from office uh, sometimes we get very good talented people also third is uh, the matter of concern pain area is that uh, high cost of licensing and complexity of remotely uh, remote access solution see uh, since 19 uh, since 2020 i would say uh, the things have changed and i would say the requirement of work from home or requirement of remote access of the application is now commoditized before uh, 2020 um you know when we talk about small and medium enterprises mostly they will working from their offices or from their factories uh, and uh, their uh, application servers were in house on premise and users were accessing it over local area network and be because of this uh, uh, the design of their erp solution was also in client server application Uh, method, you know, it was not uh, something like browser based, and sometimes browser based does uh, compromises greatly with the usability as well as security. So most of these applications are client server applications, and uh, they were using it. But after the pandemic, even every small organization also required to use these applications remotely because they could not attend the office or they don't want their users to attend the office. So um, as I have stated, you know, now the requirement of remote access. of the application is commoditized earlier it was only required by the large enterprises you know large multinational companies or indian companies which have large number of locations where people were uh, working from uh, and suddenly this requirement uh, zeroed down to so many small small companies and uh, similarly because these solutions of giving remote access to the uh, users are designed for designed by keeping large and companies in mind they are very very expensive and they are very very complex which is probably uh, not fitting with the requirement of Uh, small and medium enterprises and now because this requirement this is the requirement of every enterprise uh, complexity and cost um, you know is restricting the availability of such solutions to the small and medium enterprises second thing is when you want to um, design something you know which gives remote access of your applications to your users anywhere you also require to expend a lot on bandwidth again uh, this kind of recurring bandwidth expense is uh, okay and normal for large enterprises but for smes uh, this kind of recurring bandwidth expense is 
very very significant and it again uh, again you know uh, adds a lot of uh, uh, cost to the um, expenses and investment uh, for providing remote access of the applications to the users and that is where people uh, really struggle so these are the pain areas you know uh, where uh, organizations are compelled to provide access of their applications remotely in secured way they are also concerned about the cost and complexity of the uh, solutions available solutions and they are also concerned about why so much of bandwidth is required and if it is required then it is very expensive and it doesn't make it viable for them so now we will see what are the traditional solutions and why i claim that they are complex why i claim that they are uh, expensive why i claim that it requires a lot of uh, bandwidth we will see that but before that let us understand uh, your agreement to these points you know do you really agree with this kind of points you know why remote access is so necessary it has become compulsory but again there is a dearth of the solutions so prasanna would you please uh, run a poll so what do we uh, see as a result of the poll is uh, uh, for 28% of the people data leakage possibility is a concern while allowing remote access for 39% of the people hardware and software licensing cost on higher side is uh, something which concerns them 11% of the people are concerned with high bandwidth cost and 67% of the people have all the three concerns data leakage cost of software hardware on higher side and bandwidth cost so i think uh, this sets the context of our uh, uh, discussion and uh, uh, we will see now the complexity of the uh, uh, existing solutions and then we will derive a wish list you know uh, we will have a wish list you know what kind of best a remote access uh, uh, solution should be and then we will see how we can achieve all those uh, uh, you know things in the wish list so now i will move to the next slide so when we uh, talk about uh, existing solutions i would say there are two types of solutions one is an internet based solutions another is enterprise solutions so internet based solutions are like any desk team viewer log me in that means we have a one computer system uh, of which we share the screen you know these are primarily screen sharing applications so uh, we can share the screen and we can access tele remotely or we can access some clients or applications remotely so these are very much internet based applications now what is wrong with them number one most of these applications have two versions one is free version another is paid version free version is uh, you know requiring a lot of bandwidth because they are giving you free they are definitely getting something and uh, i remember a very very famous quote and i believe that when something is offered to you free of cost you are the product so um, when you get team viewer free or you get any desk free uh you are the product you know your internet activity your browser data are going to contribute to their analytics and it is not um, 
probably very very advisable for um, the organizations who are handling very sensitive data on their applications and every organization's proprietary data is sensitive data so uh, these applications any day steam viewer log me in they are very very bandwidth intensive and uh, they are also vulnerable to data theft there are no security solutions available you know like you cannot have a dl dlp deployed you know you cannot have dlp deployed for yourself uh, when you are using any desk team viewer or log me and if you go for their uh, paid versions they are damn expensive you know it is very very expensive uh the other type of solutions are enterprise solutions for years large enterprises have been using it and these solutions are very smart solutions very effective solutions very performance oriented solutions they are citrix uh citrix is a leader in the market and uh, most of the large enterprises use citrix and it has really uh, done a great job in providing remote application access um, uh, to to the remote users you know another is microsoft terminal server uh, i would say those who are not using any desk team viewer or log me in most of us are using microsoft terminal server we have a terminal server uh, on which we install the application then we have uh, uh, computer systems which are um, having rdp software remote desktop software and they just take the remote desktop of the server and third is kind of inuvika inuvika is a very sophisticated application virtualization technology provider where you can create something uh, uh, some cluster of servers on the cloud and uh, accordingly you can very well um, ex give access of your applications to the users now what is wrong uh, with these applications with a view to sme requirement see sme cannot afford citrix they cannot afford citrix it is too expensive for them and there is no economy of scale if you are having 10 remote users or 20 remote users or 50 remote users or 100 remote users it does not have economy of scale you cannot create so much of infrastructure another is uh, uh, they are expensive also and they are complex you know you need very uh, well qualified certified people on your side and for sme it is not possible to employ such a high cost it professional when we talk about microsoft terminal server this is most popular uh, way of doing it there um, it is always like a, a losing game you know uh, you might have 20 users you have a server windows server with maybe 32 gb ram after some time you find it slow slower 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 and slower and you are endless it's an endless exercise to upgrade your servers all the time and uh, uh, this this would have been experienced by most of the people and again microsoft server means hardware cost it means microsoft server license cost it means client access license cost and it means um, rdp client license also so it is expensive it is infrastructure expense uh, intensive it is not complex but yes it is complex if we want to secure it um, many a times remote desktop connections are vulnerable to backdoor ransomware entries in uvika is again infrastructure intensive uh, expensive complex and for uh, 100 200 500 users it is not affordable so these are the available solutions and challenges and now we will derive a wish list you know for an sme uh, what kind of uh, remote access solution should be there what could be its features and then we will see how uh, we can derive that wish list and then we will see how we can achieve it so now when we, before we move to the next uh, slide of uh, deriving the wish list um, i would request prasanna to launch the poll please
Yeah, so as we see here on the uh, uh, results, uh, the question is, do you think that there is no proper and affordable solution to extend access to legacy applications like Tally, ERP, um, with utmost security? 13% uh, say that, yes, it is difficult. Um, available solutions are not secure. 13% say that, yes, it is difficult and available solutions are complex and expensive. And 73% of the people uh, believe that, yes, uh, they are not secured, they are uh, complex, and they are expensive. So I think it will be a worth exercise, a worthful exercise uh, to uh, do this kind of analysis. Uh, what should be our ideal remote access solution? You know, what, what should be the features or wish list, you know, we would like to uh, you know, uh, see in our remote access uh, solution. So now we will derive this particular feature. So as you see on the screen, um, it has to be bandwidth frugal, you know. SMEs cannot afford to spend, uh, you know, lakhs of rupees per year on providing internet bandwidth, you know. It has to be very, very bandwidth frugal. And how you can make something bandwidth frugal, you know, how you can make something bandwidth frugal. So there, there is a logic to it, uh, how you can make something bandwidth frugal. So there is a logic to it, and we will discuss that logic with this kind of wish list, actually. Uh, another is it has to be perpetual and low cost license. Most of the licenses available are. Uh, either very expensive at uh, one-time cost kind of uh, proposition or they are recurring cost. It is like pay as you use and it adds a lot of recurring costs. So our ideal remote access application solution should be perpetual license and it should be low cost license. Then we have, um, uh, we want that to be fast and secured you know we want that uh, users do not waste their productive time in waiting for the screens to load or in waiting for the applications to uh, respond then it has to be hardware frugal you know in case we want to design an infrastructure where we want to provide remote access uh, application access to our users it should not be uh, a hole in our pocket, you know, um, in terms of very high grade hardware required, just like it is required in terminal services or it is required in Citrix. It should be accessible from any device. This is very important. You know, now um, when people are working from home, SMEs cannot afford to give laptops to everyone. You know, uh, it is not possible for SMEs. You know, large enterprises can give laptops to everyone, but SMEs cannot. And many a times SMEs request their users to use their personal laptop or personal mobile phone or personal tablet, basically, or personal desktop to access their applications. So there is a lot of diversity uh, and we don't know what operating system they are having, what kind of configuration, hardware configuration they have. And if we get into solving those very specific problems, you know, that solution becomes expensive and it is not viable. So the ideal remote access solution should be accessible from any device, any device. We don't have to worry about it. And it should be fully compliant with information security policies. Means in case you want to implement any um, DLP kind of uh, solutions or a DLP kind of policies, it should be uh, compliant with that. So our ideal uh, remote access uh, application solution uh, would be bandwidth frugal, perpetual and low cost license, it would be fast and secure. It would be hardware frugal. It has to be accessible from any device and it should be fully compliant with information security policies. So this is what I have derived. This is my wish list, you know? And uh, we will see how we can achieve all these objectives. We'll also see it practically in next uh, session. But before that, let me uh, run a poll and let me understand what is important for you, you know, out of these wish lists, you know, we have derived a wish list. Let me understand what is important for you, what, uh, which particular features or which particular um, uh, points of this li uh, wish list, you know, is important to you. Prasanna, can you please run a poll, please?
Yeah, Prasanna, will you run the next poll, please? As we see the results of the poll, um, the 60% of the people give weightage to bandwidth uh, frugal, 73% of the people think that low licensing cost should be there in the ideal solution. Um, fast and secured is the preference for 80% uh, of the people. 60% of the people expect that the ideal solution should have low hardware cost. 73% uh, of the people um, weigh a lot uh, to the accessibility from any device. And 40% of the people, uh, you know, want built-in uh, data leakage prevention in the ideal solution. So, um, uh, you know, uh, if we uh, understand this particular polls, you know, we are all valuing this particular points in our wish list for an ideal remote access solution. So now uh, we will uh, see what could be um, an ideal solution and how we can achieve all these things in a single solution. So um, we have uh, basically developed this application virtualization solution and we have tried to make sure that uh, it complies with all the points in our wish list and it delivers accordingly. So we will see how, how it works and we will see how it is bandwidth frugal, how it is uh, important. So now we will see it um, practically. So the first thing is this black box AAA we call is application, access application anywhere, AAA, access application anywhere. And it is a remote application access solution. So uh, I will, uh, uh, read these points and then we'll go back to that slide of the wish list and then we'll see how we have achieved it. So first VPN based remote access solution. So this is the only solution which is a VPN based remote access solution which gives a lot of security to your transactions between the user and between the application server. It is fully integrated with uh, black box hardware for data leakage prevention. In case you prefer DLP, it is integrated. In case you don't want DLP, uh, you don't have to uh, integrate it. Very importantly, there is no need to invest in server grade hardware, server operating system, Microsoft terminal server and li IDP licenses. This is a huge cost saving, huge cost saving. Uh, it works on a very low bandwidth. Why? Because uh, this particular technology is developed only to transmit the keystrokes and mouse clicks. It does not transmit entire data the way on VPN application data gets transmitted. So only keystrokes and mouse clicks are transmitted and the output of the screen is transmitted. So it works very fast and it is it does not require very high level bandwidth. And it is accessible from any device with black box endpoint agent. So this solution, you can access your applications. It might be developed in Visual Basic and SQL Server, or it might be developed in .NET, or it might be developed in Oracle and Developer 2000 or some other application. Um, 
you can access it from any device. You can access it from any device. It could be your iPhone, it could be your iPad, it could be your Android phone, it could be your Windows laptop, it could be your MacBook. So we'll see how, how it works. So let me uh, go back to the last uh, part, the ideal. Uh, this, is our, this was our design thinking while we were designing this particular solution. So here um, uh, it is bandwidth frugal because it is uh, taking only keystrokes and mouse clicks. It is per perpetual and low cost license. It is really perpetual and low cost license. And I'll tell you, uh, it is a perpetual license. So you do not have to really pay per year. Of course, you can pay for the upgrades. That's it. And low cost license, this low cost license is just 6,000 rupees per user. And that is also perpetual. It is fast and secured because it does not require very uh, large bandwidth and it is enabled with the VPN. It is hardware frugal. Now, let me tell you to run uh, this particular application virtual and solution. You do not require Windows Server. You do not require Terminal Server. You just require a good Windows 10 professional or Windows 11 professional operating system installed on a workstation grade or server grade hardware. That's it. And when you do not use server operating system, you don't have to pay for CAL and RDP CAL. It is accessible from any device. We will show that. And it is compliant with all information security policies of in case you have a black box DLP solution. So now we will see how it is configured. So let me show you this diagram. So this is necessarily your application server. One minute. This is your application server. It could be your tally, ERP, whatever, or it could be number of servers. What you need to do is you have to invest in one hardware, which is this hardware. And this hardware will have necessarily Windows 10. The hardware side, processor, RAM, whatever you want to keep, you can keep, but it will have Windows 10. So you are not liable to pay for any uh, client access license, RDP KL, terminal server license, or Windows server license. Necessarily, this application server and this particular application virtualization server has to be in same local area network. Now, this particular application, this particular application virtualization server, which we call it Windows 10 computer system, is loaded with two things. One is loaded with triple A, black box triple A virtualization server. And it is loaded with your client of your application. Just understand it very clearly. You need to install only the client of your application server. So if tally is installed on this particular server, the tally client will be installed on this particular server. If you have installed your legacy ERP here, SAP here, even you can have SAP also, SAP on your server, then SAP client will be installed on this. Only client, just imagine only client, nothing else. Now, what you need to provide is you need to provide a static IP on internet bandwidth. Now, what will happen? These desktops, it could be your work from home users desktops or your branch office desktops. And this could be your users laptop, BYOD laptops or company given laptop. They will connect to this particular router, which is necessarily a VPN router. In case you have not taken the black box, in case you have taken the black box, black box has VPN router. So VPN uh, is inbuilt in that. In case you don't have, just invest in a 10,000 rupees VPN router. Configure your static IP on this. And then these people will connect to this particular router or VPN. And these particular computer systems will be installed with an agent, AAA agent. We'll see how it works. Now this AAA agent or the browser, anything is fine. So they will just double click on that agent and that particular double click operation will travel through this bandwidth. It will be going through SSL VPN, so you don't have to worry about it. And then it will connect to this AAA server. And then AAA server, the client installed on the AAA server will be invoked. And when it is invoked, whatever is the output of that particular client will be reflected on this particular screens. Okay, whatever number of users. 
and users can then interact on that particular uh, screen and his mouse clicks and keystrokes are transmitted and the responses or outcome or output is always transmitted so this makes it very very uh, simple you know you don't have to invest in cluster of servers just connect through vpn have your application server and black box triple a server in lan don't install AAA server with Windows OS, server OS, don't install only Windows 10 type of OS. Install your client on this particular uh, uh, application, access application anywhere server. And then these people are uh, given the client agent and that agent, they just double click and your application is available. So this is how this entire work happens and it saves a lot of money. And then this cost is just 6,000 rupees one time cost for your users and the cost of this computer system which is not a great a very high cost it would be very negligible cost so this is how um, it works and now we will see how uh, we can actually see it practically so here i will uh, request uh, my technical team to connect to uh, one computer system which is installed with black box agent and we'll see how uh, this particular um, uh, applications can be accessed remotely. So now uh, we are connecting to uh, one computer system, you know, uh, we, of the user who is a remote user. So. Uh, you will see uh, that uh, VPN has to be connected. So it could be through your router or it could be through black box. So we have done it through black box because we have black box. So uh, can we go to VPN, please? Right click, connect VPN. Connect. So we are connecting the VPN through black box. Uh, you can connect it through your router also. You know, you don't need black box for this kind of solution. But in case you have it, there are more advantages of data security, which you can uh, add over and above this. But now we are right now we are focusing on how you give remote access of your legacy application. So now VPN is connected. Now, can you go to the this PC, please? Yeah. So VPN is connected. All your data drives are loaded. Um, now uh, close this please and uh, uh, just show this black box AAA client. So black box AAA client is installed on your user's computer. Now he just has to double click on that. Now let's say on that particular uh, AAA server, we have allowed this particular user with tally and some ERP, okay. So that application will load the client. So now if you see here uh, on this desktop, just hold a moment. Uh, on this particular screen, this is a user's computer on which your ERP client or tele client is not installed. It is actually installed on Blackbox AAA application virtualization. As soon as we double clicked on Blackbox AAA icon, it connected it initiated the tele client and ESSL client. It is also an HRMS system. It is also a client server application. It initiated it. When it initiated, um, the icons were transferred to this particular de desktop in a very, very virtual way. And now whatever we do here, that keystroke or keyboard, uh, keystroke or mouse click will be transmitted to that particular invoked client and the output will be reflected. So now as if we, want, we are double clicking on tele client, okay, uh, in our computer system. So just click on tele client first. So this is clicked here. Actually, it is virtually clicked on virtual application, Dragbox AAA uh, server. And whatever was the output, the output of the tele server is this, it is loading this. Now you can have this tally infrastructure. We are on internet, we are on VPN and just see the speed. So now you can just uh, click on few things on tally, please. Create, yeah. So here you can have create company or whatever. And it is just like user is installed with, uh, user is installed with uh, tally client 
and he's accessing it just like he's accessing it in local area network. But it is over VPN. Uh, it is over VPN as well as it is not transmitting entire tally, um, uh, you know, transactions. It is just transmitting keyboard uh, strokes and mouse clicks. Now just uh, minimize this and double and click on ESSL. So this is another application. So again, we have clicked here. That means the client installed on AAA is also initiated. Whatever was the output, this was the output. We, now we are again keying, keying in. So we have, uh, yeah, please log off first. Please log off. Yeah, go to ESSL again. Yeah, just don't log in until and unless I tell you. So now this particular ESSL is invoked, whatever is the monitor output of that ESSL is reflected to our uh, computer. Now we will put uh, this particular username and password. So from our keystrokes, this username and password will be transmitted to that particular client. Just enter username and password. Then we click on login. So this mouse click will be clicked on that particular um, black box replay server. And this can happen simultaneously for multiple number of users. Click. So now whatever is the output after clicking is visible on my screen. Just load one of the report or screen, please. So now just see the speed, you know, because it is just transmitting the click and transmitting the, uh, uh, transmitting the, monitor output. So this is how we have not installed ESSL client also. It could be your SAP client, it could be your CRM client, it could be your legacy application client, whatever it could be. It will make sure that you can very easily access it remotely. So this is about the application-based access. Can you please close this particular application? Tally also, log off please. Now I told you that um, it is also uh, uh, you know, possible to access it from any device. So it is also possible. Yeah. Can we now log on through these applications over browser, please? So now we'll connect to another computer system or just Google Chrome. Google Chrome could be any anywhere. It could be on your Mac. It could be on your uh, uh, iPad. It could be anywhere. Okay. We just have to uh, iPhone even. Uh, we can do it in Safari also. Just click on that and then it will load. That particular server will also act as a web service to your browser. And just give your username and password over here. Click. So when we click on that, this particular uh, application will go on the AAA server and it will ask for this user how many applications are allowed. So let's say for him, tally is allowed, ESSL is allowed, whatever is allowed, it will be automatically listed in his browser. Remember, we are in a browser, you know, we are on a full screen browser. Can you remove full screen for everyone's understanding? So that, see, we are in browser. Just make it full screen. So user has an experience of an application. So we are making it full screen. Now, uh, you see, uh, for this particular user in the browser, we have given him so many options, you know. We have given him spreadsheet option. We have given him uh, uh, Thunderbird option. Go to spreadsheet option first. So, we will actually load the spreadsheet over here and user can work. Again, just go, uh, uh, again, remove the full screen, please. Just for everyone's understanding. So, we are actually using this spreadsheet, um, uh, click uh, create one, yeah, spreadsheet in the browser. Go on full screen, please. Close the uh, spreadsheet, please. Go to tally in the browser. Don't save it, uh, close it without saving it. Close it without saving it. Yeah. Go to browse, uh, tally. Yeah. So now we are clicking tally in the browser. It is taking that keyboard click, keyboard stroke and mouse click to uh, a AAA server. And AAA server is transmitting through its web service to your browser over VPN. So now tally is opened in the browser. Okay. Uh, tally is opened in the browser. You can also have a, so, you can have anything, 
accessible in tally. So now, in a way, we can say that tally has become a browser-based application. Do you get it? Tally has become a browser-based application. You can very easily use tally in the browser. Again, just go uh, remove full screen so everyone understands that this tally is also loaded in Chrome. Okay. Now, just uh, click and go to full screen. So this is how uh, you can make sure that your applications can be accessed from any device. So yeah, can you please uh, give the screen back to me? So here, what we did was, here we had a client installed or we have a browser here or any computer, we connected over VPN, we, whatever we wanted to click, we were clicking on the client installed on this particular AAA, you know, client of the application installed on this computer. And then it was connecting to this server over LAN in the a very, very fast manner, it was transmitting the output. So this is a technology. Now I will again go back to the wish list. So we have seen that it is bandwidth frugal because it does not require so much of bandwidth because it is transmitting only keyboard mouse clicks. It is perpetual and low license cost because it does not require Windows Server license, RDP, KL, whatever, whatever. Uh, it is fast and secure because it is operating on VPN. It is hardware frugal. We are not putting Windows servers and all. We are just putting Windows 10. It is uh, accessible from any device. We have seen it ourselves. And it can be compliant with black box security policies. It is a black box fraternity product. So it is very, it is having all hooks to integrate itself. So this is something which is about uh, this AAA technology. This is about how to access, remotely access your applications on any device. So uh, this is something which is about the value proposition of an ideal remote application solution. And uh, this is with which I would like to, you know, um, conclude this particular demonstration. And I would like to uh, open the uh, forum for the question and answers. Yeah, if you have any questions, you can uh, either uh, raise your hand and ask the question or you can write it down in the question answers uh, in your uh, Zoom uh, toolbar and uh, I'll be happy to answer them. So we have six, seven minutes to um, uh, have question answer sessions. So I would suggest, you know, So, yeah, Mr. Gajjar is asking, can you put your question in the question answer for everyone's understanding, please? Uh, please don't put your questions in the chat. Please use question answer. You know, it will not allow others to see your questions. Let's do it for everyone's benefit. By the time you do it, uh, let me address uh, Mr. Gajjar's question, we have a black box device now, what will be the extra cost for this AAA? As I told, it is just 6,000 rupees per user. That's it, perpetual license. You pay for the upgradation every year, just an EMC, which is 10%. And uh, you will need to invest in black box AAA computer system on Windows 10, that's it. That is going to be your extra cost. So I have answered Mr. Gajjar's question. Uh, uh, Ritu Danuka is asking cost of black box hardware. See, black box hardware is available in various models, you know, like Prime T, Turbo T, 
or uh, seven user, sorry, 12 user model, 20 user model, 40 user model. So um, black box hardware is a, um, uh, it depends on the model, cost of it is depend on the models, but black box AAA cost is just 6,000 rupees per remote user you want to give access to. And that is a software solution, it is not a hardware solution. The software solution is uh, available to you at 6,000 rupees per user. Uh, and uh, you need to just invest in a black box replay server. That is for remote access. In case you are interested in complete black box solution, which is uh, having IT standardization, storage, um, data loss prevention, data theft prevention. Uh, for that purpose, you might evaluate, uh, uh, evaluate black box hardware. And for that, I think Prasanna can help you once you uh, describe your number of users. Yeah, we have a few more questions in questioners. So, yeah, I think I answered Ritu's question on live. Yeah, we have three, four minutes left to this webinar. So I would be happy to answer. And in case you have more questions, we'll, we can um, extend the webinar with everyone's permission also. Uh, Samir Mehta, single user tele can be of use. Yeah, this is a very important question, you know. See, uh, uh, let me load the slide again, one moment. So, uh, Mr. Mehta is asking that, can we use single user tele? Okay. So, when you are, let me go to this. One minute. So here, whatever is your, one minute. See, this is your application server. If you have used the single user license of Tally, it will allow single user only, right? Black box AAA cannot do anything, you know? Black box AAA is just a intermediate. It is taking the input from them and it is giving input to them, th this particular server, okay? Now, if this server does not entertain more than one user's request, black box AAA will give an error. So it is not a crack kind of solution where you can use it for multiple users and buy a single user license. It is not a crack solution. It will have to comply. I mean, if you want to access multiple users on tele, uh, remote users on tele, you need to take multiple user license of tele. Black box AAA will not be able to crack tele and you know uh, do all that uh, you know uh, jugad. It will not be possible. So uh, it will not. If it is a single user tele, you can access single user tele remotely um, by the uh, single user who is accessing remotely. It is as simple as that. Yeah. One more question. Yeah, so if you have any question, please uh, uh, put it in your uh, question answers. Uh, we have one half a minute left. Uh, over to you, Prasanna. If there is any question, I will answer or else you can conclude. Uh, please run a poll for everyone so that uh, we get uh, kind of uh, their understanding. And after that, I request everyone to, uh, you know, take the survey also for, for letting us know how we, uh, what kind of improvements uh, or what kind of uh, um, changes, modifications we should be doing in this kind of uh, uh, format so that it is more uh, meaningful for everyone else. Uh, we would also like to understand uh, that in case you are interested, we have another webinar uh, on 15th of February where uh, we are going to show how we can create lean and mean IT infrastructure. And it will be very, very surprising, you know, for everyone that how much cost can be saved on a lean and mean IT infrastructure. So we have such uh, sessions every month and you can always uh, register for that. Um, 
next week on wednesday uh, sinosoft is sponsoring uh, um, training you know uh, which is useful for everyone and that particular training is uh, going to be on a uh, person of which topic is that training on next week wednesday Yeah, by the time Prasanna checks and tells us, you know, uh, wish list from Black Box AAA. Um, I think 90% of the people agree that uh, saving uh, this kind of solution can save significant license cost. 70% are agreeing to say 10,500 rupees saved on RDP, KL and KL uh, per user. Um, saving of bandwidth cost due to keystroke and mouse click, yes, 90% of them agree. Flexibility due to access on any device, 90% is the wish list. And possible integration with DLP solutions, 70%. Yeah. Um, thank you very uh, it's much. It's on for effective selling techniques, sir. Effective selling techniques. Okay. So you can also register um, on United SMEs in United SMEs is uh, uh, we are we are supporting United SME uh, for with all the resources. So they can conduct some meaningful trainings for SMEs. This time they are going to conduct uh, effective selling techniques, you know, in case you want to share that with your colleagues. They can go on United SME website. Um, Prasanna, can you please uh, help everyone with United SME URL? Go to event page and they can register on effective selling techniques. Uh, on Wednesday, this training will happen. Uh, on 15th of February, uh, we are going to have uh, uh, a session by me, you know, it is going to be on how to create lean and mean IT infrastructure. And on 25th February, I will have a training on design thinking to solve 13 very serious IT problems. So that will be a design thinking kind of workshop. And uh, uh, in February also, we have got four more trainings uh, um, on United SME, which we are supporting. So please take uh, benefit of these trainings uh, and share it with your uh, um, you know, colleagues so that they can also take the benefit. Yeah, I think we have no questions. So Prasanna, you can please conclude the session. Thank you, for, thank you sir, for such a knowledgeable and insightful session. Uh, Sudhir sir, can you please give us your, uh, you know, concluding remarks for the session? I think we are not able to hear him. Sudhir, sir. Uh, we are not able to hear him, Prasanna. There is some tech issue. Can you please conclude the session? Yes, sir. Thank you, everyone, for attending the session. We appreciate you being here. Hope you have learned and enjoyed the presentation. Kindly fill the survey form, which you will get at the end of the session to give us your valuable feedback. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.